not having the camera so far away. Yeah. It's not about a foot difference, but it's more like honestly the legs were it was at mid table, it's probably three feet further away when it was in vertical. So well, welcome everyone. We have started the stream a little early, uh, or at our usual early time to give folks a chance to get on. And we are, now that we have the horizontal thing working, at least we think we do. Uh, so when I look in here to see on the live stream, if the horizontal thing is not in fact working, let us know. Looks like the stream hasn't quite got there yet. My C string is your main problem. It either wants to be low or high. It doesn't want to. When was the last time you restrung that U? I don't have any clue how long strings last on U's. They, people say you should change them every whenever. <laughs> Some people never change them. They say when they stop holding their tune. Well, the interesting it. thing is it says no. Oh, when's Douglas Fifth upcoming events? No events. We have this event, so I'm not sure. I'll have to go to posts, I think. Come on. Here there we are. we are. Seven people on already, so. And we are horizontal. Yes. Although it looks like, the, is the camera a little crooked? The camera is a little crooked. slightly crooked, yes. Uh, let's see. Let me, okay, you watch it. <laughs> I think I noticed this and I made a very small adjustment on this. I think that will do it. Hopefully it'll come through. It works. And yes, Adela, that, what, that is a new screen behind us. We bought a second screen. Hey, thanks, Ian. Appreciate it. I th he was really good. Tom really worked on the music, and it was really a lot of fun. I haven't pulled the comments over here. I was reading them over there. Yeah. yeah. And Sarah and a whole bunch of folks. Yeah, originally we had planned to hide the furnace and the water softener behind curtains or something, and we never could figure out how to hang something. So yeah. So we had the nice wicker uh, screen, and I said, just buy another one, and we'll just stick them down there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, worrying about people seeing your water softener is about as first first kingdom a problem as you could have. But, but it, it distracts so. from the mood of it being a pub, though. Yeah, so we just got a big wicker screen, and that covers one side. And actually, it looks really nice for the uh, for the video. That's quite quite awesome. Grilling brats and sipping bourbon. That's a uh, we had a nice cookout uh, Friday for my mom's 80th birthday. We basically took an entire birthday party with us to Erie. We took a cake and cupcakes and uh, Schmidt's uh, sausages and brats and bun. We took almost everything for the party and celebrated my mom's 80th birthday. And uh, so when you're not traveling regularly, a couple of days of travel is a little more tiring than I expected. Of course, we didn't sleep very much, but. Well, yeah, you would have stayed up all night Saturday pretty much if I hadn't gone to bed, probably. Probably true, so. <laughs> you all, the, the, uh, the irony was he was talking Saturday night up talking to his brother who lives just across town. And he just starts going back out to lunch again or something. I'm not going out, we're not going out. To Where would we go? We could go to Lefty's with Lee. That's true, we could sit outside. Maybe Dan will want to do that. Yeah. That's true. Uh, so, all right. So, let's turn off the guitar. So, I'm dropping off more guitars at the shop that need work. And it's funny, my luthier, he's like, I'm swamped. He says every musician is bringing in their gear for uh, to get it worked on. But some of my guitars are... I'll be kind and say they've been neglected for service. I mean, I change strings all the time, but you do tend to wear the frets up here. And, you know, so I have another guitar. So my red guitar, my Yamaha that I, I play with Fintan, it needed seven frets. And Mark was like, that's pretty impressive. I'm surprised you were able to make a bar chord on this thing. <laughs> so I have another guitar, one of my 12 strings. I think uh, if everything works out, 
next week or the week after I'll start playing some of my 12 strings for this show and uh, check my tuning here this ovation holds tune very nicely but that's kind of one of the one of the one of the features of it because it has a uh, composite body it's not nearly as affected if it weren't such a beautiful guitar, I'd probably consider taking it to some place like Penzig, but one of my uh, one of my nicer guitars, a 12-string that's going into the shop, has some burns on the front where some sparks from campfires hit it, and it was like, there's not much you can do. You can't really fix it, not without a significant amount of work. Adds character. Adds character. Yes, that must be it. Uh, so what time is it? Are we on time? I can look that book. It's uh, 6.57. So we're taking a slight break from, from cider, from cider um, courtesy of my brother-in-law, Pat Watts. We are drinking Straub's Amber Lager. It's from uh, St. Mary's PA, his hometown, and he always brings it you can't really get it much anyplace else. It's a local beer around PA, but he, uh, he brought a case of it for mom's party, and we drank about half the case, and he sent the rest home. It's just a light lager beer, probably comparable to drinking a, a harp. I would say slightly on the bitter side, but not, not undrinkably so. Mm, I don't find it bitter. I do. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, a little, just a little. But it's nice, it's a lager beer. I mean, it's a Pennsylvania lager beer. I mean, it's comparable, I would say, um, uh, it's like a Yingling, like a Yingling lager. But since he was kind enough to give us basically half a case of it, we thought we'd do something different. Plus, we picked up five bottles of mead from the Ironstone Meadery, stopped in to see uh, the folks there. So next week, we might start drinking some mead because I think we have the 10 bottles of their mead sitting around the house right now. So, or day drinking, we may start. <laughs> But it's really refreshing. It's just a nice. It's very light. Yeah, it's a nice light beer, not too heavy, very pleasant. Yes, but it's a sipping beer. Can't chug it like a Guinness. <laughs> well, it's got it's got <laughs> bubbles. So we have a very eclectic set for this week, due to the fact that we had to take all our stuff to Erie, and then as it turned out, we, we didn't actually practice. get front to practice. <laughs> so we came home Sunday, and we were pretty ragged so we practiced a bunch on Sunday we didn't actually practice as much on Sunday as we wanted but we practiced a bunch Monday night and then when I got home from band practice we practiced last night around I think we practiced about 11 to midnight but when you're working from home all the time I just gotta I get up at I gotta be on at 8 o'clock so I get up at 7.55 take my pills and go log in so all right Plus, uh, one feature of doing some driving lately has been the chance to audition some songs. And again, if you have thoughts on some sort of bands, I was, uh, I had band practice last night. I was driving around listening to Kansas, and I was like, I was listening to a, I have a best of the 70s kind of stuff, and it's like, we got to do a Kansas song. We did Dust in the Wind, but they have some other songs that I think would be eminently playable, so hopefully we'll get to that. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to take one more swig of beer. Here we go. The date and bike practice notification. I think you should take that off your calendar. Yeah, I gotta go to my Google calendar and shut that off, yeah. Two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
So that was Johnny Don't Go to Ballon College by Johnny Spillane, 1999. I have several of this guy's albums. He is an outstanding uh, songwriter uh, who happens to be from Ireland, but I like his stuff a lot. And he has several different recordings of this particular song that are all very different than uh, this one. This one always kind of feels to me like bluegrass. It's got that kind of that kind of feel, just E A D, real, real, e, real simple chord structure, E D A. <clears throat> the only problem with drinking with this beer, of course, the soda, the cider's fizzy. Yeah. It, uh, makes me a little burpy. But it's very good. As long as you don't burp in the middle of the lyric, it's okay. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> Been a lot of fun learning this next song. I suspect we might get a few more songs from this band in our sets because given now pretty much we suspect we're going to be doing this show till the end of the year or until we end, end of January probably a while
course, With or Without You, words by Bono, music by U2, 1987. From, uh, I believe this is on Joshua Tree, since I know that I own Joshua yeah, Tree. Yeah, it's on Joshua Tree. It's on Joshua Tree. Uh, it's a great tune. It was, it, it has four chords played in a continuous rhythm that never changes, and it was yet one of the harder songs to put well, together. Well, that would help us work it out, because whoever wrote the words oh, right. that we downloaded hadn't divided one of the verses up correctly. So it's like, we listen to the music, we work out a few, and then we mm -hmm. kind of go, hey, it's the same beat no matter what. Yeah. And that solved the, the mystery. So I threw this song in the set in honor of Penzik. I have to tell you, I'm really not interested in virtual Penzik, virtually attending Zooms, doing virtual, virtual, I'm just not. I guess I got not. But the very first time I ever took a guitar to Penzik, was I already playing guitar when I met you? You had been playing for about six months. That'd be about right. So I think this would have been um, Penzik in 1989, right before Mary and I got together. So 17, I believe. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I was on Iceland's Guard. That was yeah. Um, and I probably barely knew what I was doing with the guitar, but somebody wanted to do this song. They put the guitar sheet in front of me. I'd never even heard of it. Uh, but it's a standard that probably every single person on this call will likely know. Uh, so we'll see if we can do it reasonable justice. <clears throat> One, two, three. Oh, there's so men in a plenty and drunk The Ramblin' Rover, written by the late, great Andy M. Stewart. Uh, I think this song, he released a lot of solo albums in the same time that he was doing stuff with Silly Wizard, but I think this is on Kiss the Tears Away, and uh, is a staple of virtually every folk music group on planet Earth. The funny thing about this song is I didn't hear about it. I, didn't, I, I heard it at Penzik. And the first place I heard it played live was by Fanny Gonzale, a local 
Irish and Americana band here in Dayton. And then chased it down and was terribly disappointed to find out that Silly Wizard stopped becoming a band right about the time I went looking for them. <laughs> so sad. But really great band. Their music is still widely available. If you're, they also, Andy M. Stewart wrote Queen of Argyle. There's tons of songs. You, if you don't own a Silly Wizard album, you should. Oh, my first Irish music album, I donated to uh, the local public radio station, and for my bonus, uh, they gave me. Oh, nice. And I had a choice, and I, they said, you want traditional, you want modern, or you want? And I said, I don't have any, so you pick out for me, and they sent me a Silly Wizard. Nice. <clears throat> This next song, I'll be surprised if too many people have heard it, but then again, you all are pretty amazing and most of you are music nuts like us. So, now for something completely, completely different. One, two,
So that song is called Darkness, Darkness. It was originally written <clears throat> by a guy named Jesse Colin Young in 1969 as a worship song. I'm not really sure what church this song would be appropriate for worshiping in, although I could take some guesses. But it was very differently arranged, and so a, a country music artist named Richard Schindel in 1997 arranged this song much more the way we're playing. We're using his melody uh, and some of his style for his, from his album in 1997, Reunion Hill. But the only verses in this song were the first two. Um, and then they repeat the last. And most of the bands that record this song do go on for 10 minutes of instrumentals. So I decided I wanted it to be longer. So the third verse in this song I wrote, I wrote it. It's pretty easy to follow kind of the styling to make it a little bit longer song. But my wife says this would be a big hit uh, in yeah. the SCA and a well, it's not, Penzik there's song. There's nothing modern in it. But yeah, uh, the version on uh, Richard Schindel's 1997 Rian Hill album is good. Solas recorded this. You can actually find quite a few recordings, but I like Richard Schindel's, even though I, I own the Solas recording as well, because I own a whole bunch of Solas beats. <laughs> They're really good. <clears throat> And now for something more differently different <laughs> than the last different. Something we probably should have done last week. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Well, uh, actually, Nico said he was not up to this. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe we'll do this again in the future. And I know that we're going to do something with Tom, uh, Sir Nicholas, Tom Bowman, but we're going to do something with him again. Uh, but we're going to give him some time to find us some pieces. But uh, another song I've liked for a really long time. Uh, wow, it was a lot of work to arrange this song, highlighting the fact that we have zero blues music background. We don't know how to sing these songs. We really struggle, but I'm finally glad we got to do this tune. So here we go. <laughs> When I 
Yeah, with Dusty <laughs> Rhodes. That was Run Around by Blues Traveler, 1994, from their album Four, I think. Uh, this was another song where basically the rhythm never changes. But when you hear uh, Blues Traveler perform it, the lead singer's all over the map, but he's not playing an instrument he, other than the harmonica. He also sings about twice as many words as Lee Billy. We have been kind of going into a little lyric adjusting. Uh, Ian's on, so he'll appreciate the fact that it's hard for us not to sing on the beats and chord changes like, like when you learn most songs. And some of these blues pieces we've been trying are, the singer, you know, it's sort of like how Miles Davis accompanies his band. He, he might be playing the same song, he might not. So, but it's a fun tune, and uh, that's a song I've kind of wanted to, a lot of these songs have been in my song learn list songbook, which is gonna get a major overhaul, because someday when we get back to real life, we're gonna have the hoot nanny and but a lot of these songs are ones that I have wanted to learn for a long time, and I picked them up before I actually knew how to play the guitar very well, so some of this is moderately fortuitous. <clears throat> okay. Just a year to lovers talk. I'm a year to lovers talk with you to hear what they might say. That I might learn a little more about love just before I went away. And me, it's got to burn, and he has to put me for my love.
for Patty. It's a traditional piece, but the uh, arrangement that we used was uh, inspired by the Glen Gary Boys. They're a Celtic sort of rock band. I'm not sure what I'd call their style. They're great. I own a pile of their albums and we've actually gone to see them live. They're out of uh, Quebec, Canada. And uh, then Fintan plays this. This is a set closer and then it wails off into a couple of set fiddle pieces. But we thought it'd be something fun to play, and uh, that's our show for tonight, only slightly over. Thank you all for joining us. You will see, for those of you who liked, uh, liked the group, um, we have extended the event calendar schedule out to the last Tuesday in January, which is the 30th, and we'll be playing because, well, we pretty much don't have anything else to do. But we appreciate that you guys keep coming out and listening to us. And uh, we hope that you are all well and safe. And we will see you next week. I think we're going to try and uh, do another set of mostly folk music. We've been digging around in the 60s and 70s. We might even have a 50s song to throw in there. So we hope that you all take good care. And we will see you right here next week. We'll do some more songs. Have a good night. Stay safe. I think Fergus and Maggie were on. I saw Fergus join. Oh. Looks like the the usual suspects made it. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Twenty-seven thousand.